thank you for the opportunity to share with uh, everyone in the audience how we integrate practical machine learning and quantum mechanics tools to synthesis in medicinal chemistry. In MacM synthesis, we can artificially divide it into four stages. Route generation, route evaluation, duration and the conditions that we choose to run direction. Then run direction and see what we learn. Now for route generation, our chemists are very experienced. On top of the visual synthetic analysis, we look into various boot based and machine learning based software to see whether we can diversify it for consideration. Now we have a team of very experienced chemists select 60 highly diverse, very challenging target to do the first round of evaluation. The team come back to us and say that this software quality varies from hardly useful to quite useful. Now with software D, we do further evaluation and incorporate into our workflow. Now this kind of software are not perfect. It need a lot of human intervention to add, to improve whatever the outcome is. But that is fit for purpose, right? It allows us to diversify. It allows us to consider things that we haven't thought about. Software D have two things that particular fit for MacCam purpose, right? MacCam is fit for purpose synthesis. It allows us to delay the part of the molecule that incorporate to the later as we are using uh, doing SAR study. It allows us to designate specific advanced intermediate as a starting the material for which your synthetic analysis. Now, after we have all this route, reasonable route to consider, we still have a some unsurmountable tasks usually to deal with. Now, which route do you choose, right? For a synthetic sequence to work, you have to work for every step, the key step, right? Would we, would the substrate, will have the right reactivity? Could we get the reaction to occur on the spot that we want, which is the activity? Do we have the right protecting groups? So we ask, on top of our chemist knowledge, our machine learning tools, specifically the IBM and MIT ESCO's reaction prediction tools and quantum mechanic tools, could they be helpful to our chemists? Now, so here are seven very typical MacCam uh, reaction. Okay. Highlighted in red are the prediction that are incorrect. Highlight in blue are the prediction that are correct. Yes, these are challenging cases. Yet this is where we can have problem predict with intuitions. And this is where we need help. And you can see that quantum mechanic approach can differentiate itself. Now, due to time constraint, I'm going to focus on the second row of this reaction, that cross-coupling reaction and the alkylation reaction. Now, for this palladium catalyzer reaction, the substrate have a bromide and two chloride on it. So the IBM reaction detection tool predict with 98% confidence that it will occur on the bone mine. I would predict the same too. Bone mine is generally more reactive than the chloride. Now, our chemists would have, what they would do is, in the same calculation, they calculate for the lumbo and the IR stretch of the carbon-hydrogen bond. As you can see, there's no 
no more look on the cover next to the boma. So oxidative addition is not going to happen there. Now with the two carbon core I bond, they look at and compare the IR stretch for these bonds. And they could see that one point downward is a weaker bond as such. Our chemists will predict oxidative addition will occur over there. And indeed, this is what they observe. Next is this alkylation on pyrazole. Would it occur on N1 or N2? Now, I would predict that will occur on N1 further away from the side chain due to steric reason. IBM ration prediction 2 agree with me, but both of us are wrong. Our chemists learned from the experience that for substrate and alkylating region that could potentially halogen bonding. Now, sometimes those kind of halogen bonding will slow down the reaction. Sometimes it will actually speed up the reaction. Then it's very difficult to tell intuitively, right? But you can use quantum mechanics to quantify it. Now with this one, this is to calculate what we call the reaction energy profile. With N1 alkylation, the activation energy is about 21 kcal. Now with N2 closer to the side chain, you can see that two dotted red lines there, suggesting that the two halogen bond is stabilized to transition state. And this is, activation energy is about 15. So this is a six kcal difference between the two competing paths. Now, for a difference about 1.5 kcal is about 10 to one, right? Three kcal is a thousand to one. Six kcal is a lot. That accounted for, we do not observe any N1 calculation. Now, the current machine learning reaction prediction two have limitation because of the algorithm and the model being used, right? For reaction, we know as organic chemists, the key determinants for feasibility of reaction is electronic effect, reactivity, and series effect. Machine learning to currently do not take this into account. But this is changing. So this is a publication from MIT, what they call the fusion machine learning and quantum mechanic tool for visual selective prediction of halogenation, which they incorporate partial charge and Fourier constants for the prediction, which have shown to increase significantly the accuracy of this tool. Now, what we have just covered is the strategic component of which will stack analysis for synthesis. Now, we can now use stage three, that is the tactical component. It's not trivial, right? What region do you choose? What uh, solvent, what reaction condition, et cetera, et cetera, right? Most of our PhD in total synthesis actually are working on this. For five years, or even many people trying to figure out this out. So, for us in MedChem synthesis, on top of our knowledge, extensive knowledge that our colleague has, are then machine learning tools that we find useful. I would like to select this one to showcase how important it is for us. For us in medicinal chemistry, we often need to make foreign-native analog for one reason or the other. So here is a result from the using of this machine learning tools developed with quantum mechanic data by Professor Doyle in Princeton. At that time, we happened to have to convert this alcohol shown here to the fluoride. We use stars, we have 10%. Most of the material are elimination product. We learned from the literature, if we convert to mislead this space with the fluoride, we'll have better yield indeed we could from 10 to 54%. We are at this stage when this paper was published. And this tool is very easy to do. Take a few minutes to calculate the hormone normal energy. 
from the same calculation, get the electrostatic and expose the area of the cohort next to the hydroxy group. Put this data in the script and run it through the machine and it in 10 seconds. It generates the graph next to it. It suggests to us to use per for butyl sulfonyl all right, right? and BTPP as a base. And we are so happy to see a 91% yield on the reaction. Now, this is very, at the time, very important for us because we don't have much of this alcohol. And later on, when we scale this up, it's a big difference when you still need to scale up the whole process. 10% uh, versus 91%. Now, stage four, execution and learning. After we run orders, if things work well, fantastic. If it doesn't work well, we better understand why it doesn't, so that we only play for what we call uh, the school fees once, right? Our chemists, for all this learning and reviewing, recognize at what specific situation, what machine learning tools they use, what quantum mechanic tools, what fusion tools they use. For quantum mechanic, very specific, they learn what to calculate how to calculate, how to analyze, how to improve the SOP for all this detection and calculation. And after all this, the feedback into this loop, so we will have a very positive uh, loop to do that. Now, over the year, uh, our chemists find that there's no books in the available to teach them how to do this kind of analysis. And over the year, they learn with confidence how to do that. So knowing that there's no textbook, they write chapters. The 38 chapters are collated into this ebook that you could download from this SL code. The title of this book is Quantum Mechanics for Organic Chemistry and experimentalist approach. So what this reminds us is a synergism that we see very similar to what Gary Kasparov in advanced chess, that when he paired competent chess players with software, they observe improved the pain level, never seen before, both in strategic and tactical level. We are seeing the same thing with chemistry. In the machine learning community, they call this multi-agent intelligence. That means coupling smart software, a smart player, develop something that could outcompete both of them. We focus, we need to focus on what we call relevant data. All the data that we use in quantum mechanics machine learning have to be relevant to reality for us to make data-driven decisions. With that, I would like to acknowledge uh, the contribution from a lot of Wushi Connect, the creator for all this software application that we are able to successfully incorporate into our workflow. And the colleagues name up there for them to create the software uh, application, for them to evaluate and then implement all this. With this, I thank everyone for your attention.